I'm Sarah Angel and I'm the Executive Director of the Art Canada Institute at the University of Toronto. Lauren Harris was the unofficial founder and leader of the Group of Seven. He was somebody who was highly articulate, patrician, well-born, well-educated. In the early 1900s, 1904 in fact, he went to Berlin. He spent about five years in Berlin learning the techniques of post-impressionism. And he came back to Canada and he brought these techniques with him. And when he came back to Canada, what he wanted to do was paint the landscape with the techniques, with the methods that he had learned in Europe. Although he did that, he, he was irreverent and emphatic about stating that the work of the Group of Seven, his early work, that the only source of it was the Canadian landscape itself. He, he would never acknowledge that there was any sort of European influence upon his work. And he spoke uh, with much conviction throughout his life about the fact that Canadian art had to be a self-born, uh, self-generated factor. And, and that is something that he dedicated his early life to. This work, Grounded Icebergs, is a work that is, is fascinating because it can be understood as a, a, a door that looks backwards to one point in Harris's life and forward to another. It was executed in 1930, and after Harris painted this work, he stopped painting for another four years. And the reason for this is that with this work, what Harris was trying to do was he was trying to, he described it, infuse abstraction with naturalism and spiritualism. But when this work was shown in 1930, it was shown with five other Arctic works. What he said of it was that he felt completely indifferent. Then what happened in Harris's life is he moved to New Hampshire. He took a position at Dartmouth. And when he was there, a new freedom emerged in his art, and he became an abstract painter. However, although he painted those works, the works that Harris is famous for, the works that Canadians want to see, in fact, the works that the world wants to see, are the works of Lauren Harris's icebergs. And that's because these works became so iconic. They became the symbols of Canada. But what we're looking at here with grounded icebergs is a piece of water that is just off of Godhaven, Greenland. And what took place was Lauren Harris and another group of seven member named A.Y. Jackson, in the summer of 1929, they took a government freight ship to the Arctic, it was a three-month boat trip where, where this freight ship was essentially moving along the coastline of, uh, of northern Canada, um, dropping off supplies, regulating ways, um, and they used it as an opportunity to sketch, and every now and then the ship would go into land, and what happened was they, they were docked, they went into land, they went off onto the coast, and Lauren Harris was on the shore, and from there, there emerged uh, these amazing majestic looking icebergs and there was a sublimeness and a majestic quality to them that really really entranced him. Um, that said, it took him a while when he got back to Toronto to actually render this painting which was part of a suite of other paintings about the Arctic and I think the reason it took him a while was that he was going through some personal crises about his art, whether he should evolve to more of an abstract style, um, or whether he should keep moving in a way that so many, so many um, Canadians celebrated already. So one thing that I, I, I love about this exhibition, and I think it's so unique, is that Lauren Harris's Granite Icebergs is situated right beside a painting by George O'Keefe. Lauren Harris moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico in 1938. And the way that art historians have documented this fact is that it was happenstance, that he and his wife were out for a drive and they ended up in Santa Fe and they decided to move there. Well, anyone who's taken a road trip from New Hampshire to New Mexico knows that it's a fair distance and probably somebody wouldn't just do that by chance. Um, we know, we know that Lauren Harris had a great admiration for George O'Keefe. There also is evidence through the painter Emily Carr of the relationship between George O'Keefe and Lauren Harris. Emily Carr in 1930 met 
uh, George O'Keefe, and it was an introduction that was facilitated through Lauren Harris. So um, although there aren't accounts of the two of them hanging out together in Santa Fe, I think there is a lot of evidence to show that Harris uh, admired O'Keefe's work enormously and that his arrival in Santa Fe was not just happenstance. Um, the two shared a lot of similarities. One of the key similarities between them is they both admired the work of theosophy. They both were very interested in the work of Kandinsky. They were uh, both extremely interested in spiritualism and how landscape painting could be used to convey a spiritual approach to the land and a spiritual understanding. But I think most of all, the thing that the two shared is that they had such a strong passion and belief that in North America, uh, artists had to define an art of their own. There had to be a continental approach to, pre to painting landscape. And, and both of them spoke about it passionately. George O'Keefe said, you know, with all of, with all of uh, and the American artists going off to Paris, how was the great American thing ever going to happen? Lauren Harris said, if we continue to bow to the taboos and the beliefs of a foreign land, we will never have our own indigenous art here. So very much they were connected through this belief of American, Canadian, uh, South American painters in the early 1920s who wanted to create a continental, uh, a hemispheric approach to landscape, one that was quite different what was, from what was taking place in Europe. Harris was a real advocate of art education and he believed that unless people saw art from around the world, from other places, their own art would never emerge. So again, I think he'd be really pleased to be in this exhibition because what he was always trying to do, what he was so concerned about was um, an international conversation about art. What he didn't want is for his legacy to be just about uh, his paintings of the North. Being in this exhibition, it would, it would really, um, he'd, he'd be thrilled. It would be, you know, it's the fulfillment of what, of what he wanted to see happen with art.